Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 22nd of June 2020 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. And it's been a bit of a whippy morning this morning so far uh, on European trading, European equity trading. The, the major indices started off lower, uh, but then as the morning progressed, uh, we did see a bit of a push higher. At one point, they were all showing modest gains, and now we appear to have fallen back ever so slightly into the red. U.S. trading, cash trading in the over New York is going to get underway in about two and a half hours' time. We're expecting a little, uh, a slightly negative open for the for the cash trading session over New York. And like the major kind of theme of the last uh, 48 hours or the last 72 hours has been that there's been a sadly an increase in the number of cases of COVID-19. Countries like various different states in the U.S. Uh, and countries like Germany, India, China have all increased, have all registered an increase in new cases. And that appears that, that is kind of, it appears that traders are wrestling with that. That's why when things got going, uh, first thing here uh, in this morning in Europe, you know, quite a few of the industries were down over, you know, um, either nearly a percent or over percent. Then they're back in positive territory. Now they're back ever so slightly again. It seems to me that there's clearly concerns about the health crisis, which is, which is very valid, um, because if economies are reopening, we're likely to have a scenario of increased cases. But I think also traders are starting to kind of wrestle with the idea, you can't stay on lockdown forever. And if you do reopen the economy, you're going to have some sort of, um, you're going to have some sort of an increase in cases. And provided that doesn't spiral out of control and we wind, wind up like in a scenario we were in in late February, March, when the coronavirus, the COVID-19 crisis was spreading like wildfire, we may have a bit more tempered reaction from the markets. That being said, there's also been an absence of really positive news to kind of drive markets on higher from here. So that's been kind of the major kind of story and the major moves uh, we've seen in the last few hours trading. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll quickly take a look at the Week Ahead article, uh, which can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under Insights, you can, you, you'll, um, you'll find the, um, the News and Analysis tab. So if you take a look through here, what can we expect out tomorrow? France, Germany and the UK have the, uh, the, flash, mana, um, the flash PMI reports. <clears throat> Excuse me manufacturing and, and, and what have you and, and services coming out tomorrow uh, that's going to make a, give a very clear indication of what's going on in terms of um, the economies of you know some of the biggest countries um, uh, biggest economies in Europe France Germany and the UK on Wednesday uh, we have full year figures from stagecoach the UK transport company <coughs> excuse me uh, also Wednesday we have the German IFO business climate rating Thursday, we have full year numbers out from Raw Mail Group. Uh, keep an eye on their parcel delivery section in, in, in regards to those numbers. Darden restaurants over in the US will have their fourth quarter numbers out. Their outlook is going to be very interesting given what's going on in relation to the reopening of, um, of, the, of the various different uh, US state economies. Uh, Nike, uh, Nike have fourth quarter numbers coming out on Thursday. Also on Thursday, we have the final reading of the U.S. GDP for the first quarter. We also have uh, U.S. banks are going to be in focus as the, the, the stress test of U.S. banks will be published. Uh, and then also what we do have is on Friday, we have first quarter numbers, a, trade, a first quarter trading update from Tesco. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have U.S. personal spending. Uh, so obviously that's going to be uh, very closely watch, see actually how much appetite there is to, for actually to go out and actually spend money. And keep in mind, we we'll see a very decent rebound in US retail sales not that long ago. So for uh, viewers who, are, who regularly watch this video, I'll start off now with a few of the major indices, then I'll look at a couple, of, a few of the big uh, currency pairs, and then lastly, I'll wrap things up with some commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, we can see at the wider view, and this has come across all the major indices, has been in an upward trend for the last number of months since late March. Uh, we can see here that we're comfortably above the 50 moving average, this blue line along here. That comes into play just north of 6,000 because we're currently at 6,276 there thereabouts. Even though we're off the highs of early, of early June and we're below the 200 moving average, the wider upward trend of the last few months is still in play. 
And if we're pretty much right on the 100 day moving average at the moment at 62.75. If we can manage to get back above that and then potentially build that, use that as a support line, support area to kind of springboard on higher, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of early June in around 6,513. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at the next big level to keep an eye out for will be this red line here, the 200-day moving average, and that comes in the play just south of 6,800. Notice how the 50-day moving average acted nicely as support here uh, in the middle of June. So that area could act as support yet again, should we have a move lower from here. And if you do have a decent break below the level seen here, um, on the mid-June at, at 60.50. If you do have a decent break below that, could take us, could take us back towards the psychologically important 6,000 area, uh, and, a, and a move below that could take us back towards this zone here, down around 5,800. It is a reasonably similar picture with the DAX, whereby we've seen a nice, decent move higher from late March through January, where we hit a, sorry, through January, through June, early June, where we hit a three-month high. We've had the pullback. We seem to be kind of dancing around this area here, this red line, 200-day moving average. We're holding, a, we're holding um, in around 12,800, sorry, 12,286 currently. We seem to be hanging around the 200-day moving average, but why we hold above it is likely that the wider upward trend of the last few months is going to continue. And should that be the case, we can then be looking at retesting the high scene in uh, in the first week or so, or the early first week, week and a half of June, and that'll be up towards 12,930. And if we go beyond that, we will then be setting new multi-month highs, and we'll then potentially be looking towards 13,000. If we do have a fairly sizable break below the 200 moving average here, which comes into play pretty much on this level here, in around 12,280-odd, or maybe a bit below that, we could be looking at heading back towards the 100-day moving average in this, this yellow line here, because we can see it acted nicely as support in early June, but we can also see that the 100-day moving average almost you know, overlaps with the 50-day moving average, this yellow line here, which in a few occasions acted nicely as support. So this area here could be of interest um, should we see a further de decline, should we, should we have a, a fairly decent move to the downside in the DAX. So we could see potentially buyers step into the fold should the market head down towards here. And that comes into play in around 11,371. Now, the reason why I say it could be of interest is because if, if metrics have been uh, acted as nicely as support in the past, it makes it more likely that they will do in the future. But of course, there are no guarantees. I will have a look at the S&P 500 now. Bit of a common th um, theme here, whereby we've seen a decent move in the in the index from the from mid to late March through the high to to a highs being achieved in early early-ish June, where we saw the, the market hit its highest level since February, so had a multi-month high. We can see here that the market, even though it has, has um, moved to the downside, it found support, it rebounded, but, but yet we haven't taken out the recent high. So it seems to me that if we can hold above this red line here, the 200 moving average at 3,023, the wider upward trend should remain intact. Uh, and should that be the case, what we can do is, let's remove this box. Should that be the case, we could see the wider upper trend move intact. So we could be looking at retesting in 3,200. And if we go beyond that, the highs of, um, of early June are 3,232. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards 3,350. If on the other hand, though, we have a fairly decent move to the downside, and the S&P 500 support could come into play from this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average at 2,930. Once again, we can see how it acted nicely as resistance in late May. It also acted as support in, kind of, you know, in, in late May and acted as support yet again in early June. So once again, if a metric has a history of acting as support and or resistance, it makes it more likely that it will do so again in the future. And if you do have a fairly decent break below that, we could then be looking heading down towards the 2,800 area. I'll take a look now at a couple of the big currency pairs. What's going on with the uh, with the euro versus the US dollar? So 
one of the kind of common themes of the last few weeks has been that the U.S. dollar has often done well whenever there's, there's been a bit of uncertainty uh, in, in, in stocks and, and commodities. So we've seen the dollar act as a bit of a risk-off play, and conversely, we, there's been a few occasions when quite a few occasions when stock markets and metals have been strong, and likewise, and, and the flip side of that has been the dollar has been weak. So when stock markets were driving higher, hitting their kind of multi-month highs in early June, what did we see here? We saw the euro gain considerable ground versus the US dollar, and to a lesser extent, the pound as well. But we seem to have given up a, ch a fair bit of a chunk of that ground that was, that was, that was gained um, between basically between mid mid early early to mid June, early to mid May into into mid June. So we've had a decent rally here for for a month. We've pulled back now. We seem to be in this kind of consolidation zone here in around 12, one spot twelve on Euro dollar. If we can hold above that metric, the wider upward trend of the last few weeks could continue and we could look at kind of heading towards one fourteen. Targeting we look to head towards one fourteen twenty two, the highs of of um, of, uh, of June. And if we go beyond that we could then be looking at targeting the highs of March in at 114.95. On the flip side, if we do have a fairly decent move to the downside and we have a, and we have a decent break below the 112 area, it could take us back toward this red line here, the 200 moving average. Notice how it acted as, as, a, as a resistance on a couple of occasions not too long ago. So that, that metric comes into play in around the 1 spot 10, 28 area. So keep an eye on 1 spot 10, 28, if we ha should we have a decent break below 112. Like I was saying, there's been a very common theme recently has been that the, the dollar has, uh, has outperformed or has seen a, bit of, uh, seen a bit of ground being gained whenever stocks have been weak. So if you take a look at the price and action here on pound dollar, we can see here that it had a multi-month high in, in, um, in early June. When the uh, when the dollar was weak, but we have been kind of pressing lower on the greenback on the on the uh, on the pound versus the dollar the last few sessions. We're below the what the 30 moving average, the 100 moving average, and the 50. So that the sentiment at the moment isn't looking too great for the pound sterling. So if we continue to press press lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this area, the lows of mid May, in around one spot 21.63. If we go below that, we could be looking head head heading towards the lows of mid May down around 1 spot 2076 and if you go below that we could be heading down towards 120. If on the, on the flip side though if we do see a turnaround in sentiment and it does look to kind of uh, retake uh, the 200 moving average this red line here in at 1 spot 2685 notice how it the market tried to get above it on the 16th of June but it couldn't um, so that, that this is likely to be an area of resistance should we move to the upside again if we can get back above that we could be looking at targeting the highs of mid-June in at one spot 2813 and if we go beyond that we could be looking heading up towards the psychologically potent 130 mark take a look now what's going on in the gold market Gold is doing quite well. Um, gold is currently trading at 17.48. We're not too far away from the highs of uh, from the highs of, of mid-May, which is 17.65. And keep in mind, 17.65 was the highest level in over seven years. It was about a seven year, seven and a half year high there thereabouts. So sentiment is quite strong in the gold market. Notice how the last few sessions the market has been ticking higher. This blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at 17.17, is acted nicely as support. While we hold above that, it's likely that the, the recent upward trend could continue, and we could be looking at targeting 17.65. And if you go beyond that, we, then we, we, we would be in new multi-year high territories, and then we could be looking at, you know, we'll have people talking about 1,800 not long after that. If you do, though, break below 17.70, the 50-day 50, 50 moving average, we might find support come into play at the big psychological number of 1700 and even if you go below that we could be looking at heading back to, down towards the lows in early june in a 1670 and it's only really if you have a sizeable break below 1670 then we'd be creating multi-month lows but then we begin to think okay maybe gold is a bit as it could um, could lose further ground from here but for the time being it seems to me that gold's in a fairly strong upward trend now, lastly, I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, the August contract. The oil market has been in decent shape recently. Kind of, it ties in with the idea of economies re reopening. Um, 
people perceptions about demand are changing as well we're getting you know OPEC, OPEC plus have, have pledged to have even better compliance rates with the very deep and historic production cuts that, that they currently have in place so we can see here that it's been rebounding the last few months so it's gaining getting back some ground we can see here it's been pushing higher the last few sessions the highs of the last few days haven't gotten, gotten quite up to the highs of the early June, but we're not too far away from it. So if we take out the highs of June here, we could be looking at targeting the lows of, uh, of March where this gap was created in around $46 a barrel. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's the kind of the near term target should the bullish trend continue. If you do drift, if you do drift lower from here, support could be found from this zone here, the lows of, of mid June in around $37 a barrel. And even if you go below that, we could find support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play at $34, spot at 59 cents. Now, I appreciate your time uh, for listening to me today. Uh, stay safe, have a good trading week, and good luck.